Magandang tanghali, MPC. Magandang uh, tanghali, Presidential Spokesperson, Chief Legal Counsel, Attorney Salvador Panelo. Question? Good morning or good afternoon. You know, apparently, maraming journalists or reporters na hindi kasama sa MPC. Kasi akala ko pag nilabas doon, alam ng lahat. Hindi pala. Kasi ang dami pa rin, despite the statement, nandun pa rin yung katakot-takot na eh, queries. Anyway, uh, before we proceed, <clears throat> let me make a statement on what I said earlier about the inclusion of PRRD in the hit list. I was talking to Secretary Speron earlier, and he said the inclusion of the president in the hit list has been validated by them. So it was not a wrong info fed to them. And uh, according to him, as I said, uh, even if they deny it, Joe Masisian has denied it, the fact remains that indeed the president is included in the list including him, including the secretary and others. And as I said, the last briefing, even if there was no false information, even if that's true, we are ready for them. Because as I said, the very organization of the Communist Party is precisely to bring down the government and to assassinate the officials of that government, of that government. And I'm issuing a statement on the latest statement made by Joma Season. Hmm? Later, I'll make a formal statement. But may I just say that <clears throat> the president is daring him to come home to the Philippines and have a one-on-one -on -one talk with the president. Even before this panel, no government panel involved, no panel on the committee side. He is asking him to come to the Philippines. There will be no enforcement of any warrant. Just come to the Philippines and talk with him. We condemn, of course, the violations of the ceasefire agreement. You must remember that it was them who declared a unilateral ceasefire. And that has also been violated, and there has been a violation. But nevertheless, we are giving them the chance to explain why it has committed such a violation. And since the president has always been open, giving a little window to the pursuit of peace, he will wait for the explanation coming from them. Question, MPC. MPC question. Joseph. Sir, since we were on the subject already, you know, so see the drama so issued a yes. statement, quite a long one, no? Um, Sabinya, I'll just maybe, okay. Response, please. Sabinya, the response, the resumption of the peace negotiations can be realized by reaffirming the mutual agreements since the Hague Joint Declaration of 1992 uh, and several other um, agreements in the past. So is the government ready to reaffirm those agreements in preparation for a peace talk negotiation? The government is open to a talk with them. But even prior to the talk, the president stated that he wants Joma Sisson to come over, not to fear of any arrest. Mm -hmm. He's man enough and sincere enough, he can come over and have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with the president. Um, okay, another comment, sir, just response. 
the Duterte regime is going downhill to hell and cannot find enough relief from its imperialist masters to overcome. He must the, be referring to himself and his movement. Mm. All right, sir, just going back to your earlier statement, uh, when did the president tell you that he wants to talk to Joma 1-1? 24. Christmas Eve. Mm. Um, formal invitation, though, sir. Meron da da da. Huh? Meron ba dapat formal invitation? Wala siya sinabi. Basta sinabi niya na. Hindi ko alam if he already course it through Secretary Bello. Uh -huh. What does the president hope to achieve with the, the one one? I, I don't know. That's his call. But in the Philippines, no? Come home yes, first. Yes, in the Philippines. What if a third party country? As I said, if he really wants to show his sincerity, he can come home. All right, sir. Thank you. He should not be afraid of his own shadow. Follow up, Ina. Sir, but what was the context of that discussion, that uh, the one you had on the 24th? Why did the president end up telling you to invite Joma Sison to talk to him? Well, with respect to the ceasefire. What's we this? were talking about the ceasefire, uh, about the localized <clears throat> negotiation, <clears throat> and about the stand of the mayor of Davao. He said the localized peace talks can still uh, proceed. Um, speaking of that, sir, yung pag-exclude doon sa Davao na sinasabi ni Mayor Sara, what did the President say about that? Pwede pa rin. Pwede. Well, kasi, I mean, exclude muna oh. in the meanwhile. Wala pa naman kasi talk, sir. Sir, in the meeting, in the meeting, possible meeting with Joma Season, is there anything specific that the President uh, wants to talk about? Wala naman siya sila. Okay, and that possible meeting is separate from, it's a separate yes. uh, from the issue to on the yes. assumption of government panels. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Ina. MPC follow up. Still on the same subject matter. Uh, Alexis Rose. Sick. <clears throat> Has the president reacted to the attack by the NPA? Yung attack during the day one of the ceasefire? Well, he directed uh, the authorities to investigate the matter and to explain why there has been such an attack. So what was his reaction? Uh, Hinga, he, he wants to know the facts. Kung talagang bakit nila ginawa yun. So he's still open, he still believes in the sincerity of the No, he's, uh, he's, waiting, he's waiting for the report and for the explanation why they made an attack. But what, one, one, th one thing is clear, the president really wants peace among Filipinos. Sec, regarding the exclusion of Davao, so the, the president is considering that? Yes. Yung In the meanwhile, there are no talks yet. Your exclusion of Davao City? Yes. Tuloy pa rin yung ano. Teka, in-exclude na ba sec o magkakaroon ng separate order for that? Wala naman siya sinabi, basta sinabi, kasi tinanong ko siya, no? Okay lang yan. Wala pa naman talks. Okay, sick. Basta tuloy pa rin yung ang ginagawa nila noon, localized. Because the fear of the mayor is that magagamitin lang ng kabila to reorganize. Okay, thank you. Which is a very valid observation. Thank you, uh, Alexis. Roscos, Julie, then uh, Arian. Uh, Mike, please. Sir, clarification lang. Mayor Sara is asking for the exclusion of Davao sa ceasefire. So, ibig po bang sabihin, tuloy ang offensive ng military and police against NPA sa Davao since kinoconsider ng Pangulo na pagbigyan yung healing po ni Mayor Sara? I think more on the, ang palagay ko yung ki Mayor Sara, more on the localized peace talks. Kasi, I understand that the local peace talks are very effective. It has resulted into surrenders, surrender of so many NPA. Kaya ayaw nila ng localized peace talks. Ayaw ni Mayor Sara na mat matigil yun. Uh, ayaw matigil ni Mayor Sara yung localized, yung localized peace talks na ongoing na. 
Pero po yung exclusion ng Davao sa ceasefire declaration, unilateral ceasefire. Kasama yun sa hinihingi niya. Pagbibigyan siya ng pangulo. Kaya naman eh. Okay lang, wala pa naman peace talks daw eh. So, malinaw lang sir, tuloy ang opensiba ng mga militar at pulisya sa Davao City. Unang-una, wala namang military offensive doon eh. I don't think there is a military offensive right now. Kasi nga, nagkakaroon, mayroon precise ng localized peace talks eh. When you're having peace talks, wala kayong military offensive. Okay, sir. Sir, um, regarding po dun sa nabanggit nyo po na one-on-one -on -one talk with the president ni CPP founder uh, Season, is this a condition para po mag-pursue yung pagkakaroon ng informal? Wala siya sinabing condition. Wala siya sinabi niya, I want to talk to you one-on-one -on -one here. Ang binanggit po kasi ni CPP founder Season is po pwedeng mag mag uh, magkaroon ng pag-uusap dito sa Pilipinas pag nagkaroon po ng um, development sa pag-uusap ng government and NDF peace plan. That's, that's, that's none of the president. He either takes it or leaves it. What if what if CPP founder turns uh, down? Then we will we will decide when that assumption comes into being. As of now, sir, as, as soon as possible, dapat mag-meet yung dalawa po. Whether it's soon as possible, basta yan ang posisyon ng Presidente. You come over, let's talk. Okay, sir. Thank you. Salamat, uh, Rosa. Julie, Arian, balik tayo kay Alexis, mami. Sir, clarification lang. Uh, yung sinabi niyo po kanina na walang military offensive sa Davao or law enforcement operations against NPAs. Wala akong alam. Wala akong narinig na may offensive. Ah, okay. Pero given na Mayor Sar is... Uh, asking that the vow be excluded from the ceasefire. Does it also mean that law enforcement operations like serving of warrants, ganon, hindi, uh, eh, tuloy siguro, pa rin? Siguro tuloy yun. Dahil kung, kung ano ang current situation, ayaw niyang magambala yan. Okay. Salamat, Julie. Uh, Arya, mic please. Hi, Sek. Sa kasi si Mayor Sara po, sinabi din po niya na she's also asking for the exclusion of Davao City once the national government pursues the reopening of the formal peace negotiations. May reaction na po ba si President Duterte dito? Kahit daw po sa formal resumption ng peace talks, ayaw po masama ni Mayor Sara yung Wala Davao. pa doon. Yung, yung portion niya, wala pa. Yung sinabi lang, habang wala pa. Okay so lang. sir, yung sa ceasefire lang po yung pwedeng i-allow. Yung holiday ceasefire, sir. Yes. May iba pa po ba, sir, na areas or cities na nag-request kay President Duterte ng exclusion? None that I know of. Okay, sir. Thank you po. Thank you, Arian. MPC, uh, any more follow-up regarding doon sa exclusion? Or, ah, Francis, same topic. Ah, same topic po. Sir, uh, tanong mm. ko lang kasi uh, previously nga, ang, ang, ang PNP, AFP, and DND, uh, kaya ayaw nila magkaroon ng peace talks is because yung ang they believe na wala nang grip si CPP founding chairman Jose Maria Season sa sa whole organization ng CPP NPA. Uh, kaya nga ang AFP rin ay sumusuporta sa localized peace talk. Do you do you uh, share the same sentiment na ganoon nga kaya ayo na ng DND ng ganung ng peace talks is. Yeah, bro. Considering katulad that... ng katulad sir nung yun nga nagkaroon na naman ng ng mga pag-atake. So apparently yung sa ground hindi na sinusunod yung higher echelon ng CPPNPA. Considering the effectiveness of the localized talks, I share the view of Secretary Speron and Secretary Lorenzana. Kaya ayaw nila. Kasi pag uh, dumadami, nagsusurrender, hindi nauubusan sila ng mga membro. <clears throat> Francis, well, uh, balik na kay Arian, tapos kay Julie. Sir, um, reaction lang, sir. Sabi po ng NDFP sa Southern Mindanao, dun, dun daw po sa pag-request ni Mayor Sara ng exclusion, she is bent to rule with impunity daw po dun sa pag-request niya. Sabi nila, sir, Mayor Sara wrongly blames the alleged failure of the peace talks to the countless criminal acts and treachery of the revolutionary forces. Pero yung military naman daw po natin yung nag lumalabag talaga ng ceasefire. Kaya daw napipilitan lang mag And the FP, sir, Southern Mindanao. And they should look at themselves in the mirror. Okay. Pero sir, yung uh, reaction nyo po that President Mayor Sara is bent to rule with impunity daw. Kaya they should look at themselves in the mirror. Ibig sabihin sila yon, <laughs> hindi si Mayor Sara yon. Okay. Mayor Sara always 
being a lawyer, always one that the rule of law prevails. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ariana. Julie, back to you, Julie. Um, di ba hihingan po natin ng paliwanag yung ND, NDF, CPP, NPA about their violation of their own ceasefire, correct? After that, will President Duterte revoke yung pag-declare niya ng ceasefire or is he gonna give them another chance pa? We will have to wait for the President to decide on that. We cannot speculate on what he will do. Pero dun sa, pag dun sa, nung sa unang-unang in-announce yung ceasefire, may condition po ba for the lifting of the ceasefire? Like for example, isang wala, violation? Wala, 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 wala siya yung binanggit. Wala okay. kami pinagsama ng mundo. Okay, thank you. Salamat, Julie. Uh, MPC, any, any more questions regarding dun sa same topic? Or shift na tayo, Tina? Shift ka, Tina. Mike, please. Sir, Merry Christmas. Merry uh, Christmas. There were at least 16 people reportedly killed during the typhoon or Sula. What are the uh, directives of the president? Some local governments are asking the national government for assistance. Well, the, the, as we have repeatedly said during this time of calamities, all the agencies involved in the rehabilitation, in helping, assisting, are all in place. So is there a chance that the president will visit these affected areas? At least before the new year or shortly after? Wala siyang binanggit. Wala siyang binanggit. I hope to talk to him when he, after the briefing. We guess that he's updated naman regularly. Thank you. Salamat, uh, Tina. Uh, other matters? Any other topics? Balik tayo kay Joseph, kay Alexis. Okay, uh, Joseph. So yun lang pong in ni Presidente na extend yung validity ng 2019 budget. Um, why did the President decide and approve that? I, I do not know that. Yeah. I, 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 he hasn't told me anything about it. I will ask him. Yeah, okay, just, just for probably context. Kasi sir, di ba para na-delay yung budget natin last year and then some projects were affected. Now, we have a cash-based uh, system, meaning if you're not able to spend the money for 2019, it goes back to the National Treasury. That has effect on the capital outlays of some of the key projects of the administration. Again, the question, why... I will ask him so that we will know the specific answer to that. Do you think I'll that be talking to him after this. So. Uh, do you think that will be beneficial for the economy, the extension? Because we will have the projects. Well, if he has extended it already, so <laughs> the obvious is obvious. What is the obvious? Oh, the beneficial. Mm. Extend it. Mm -hmm. How is it beneficial? <laughs> I need a sound well, we'll, for the story. We will make a statement that because we will be talking after this. Uh, okay. Uh, same topic. Ano po na, Rose? Uh, si Alexis muna po kita po sa'yo. Uh, Mike, Mike ulit. Yeah. Ah, sige na. Related to the budget, sec. when will the president sign the 2020? Sabi niya, January, first week. So, hindi, hindi na within the year. Kung hindi na within the year, magre-re-enact yun automatically. Eh, parang yun first yung, month. Unless na I misheard him when we were talking on the phone. <laughs> yun ang, <laughs> ang... Kasi tinanong ko siya. Kailan daw... <laughs> kailan nyo yung budget? Okay, sinabi parang, niya January. Parang siya. sinabi niya January. Parang first week. First parang, week of January. Parang yun ang... Will there be a ceremony? Ah, yun. Hindi o, malami. Ma ano na lang. Yung parang last time na ano, na tahimik. Ah, tanong ko siya mamaya. Uusap ko mamaya. January, ah, January. Yan ang intindi ko. <laughs> <laughs> Pero yung suppose January na, eh, wala na naman pasok, eh, 28, 29, Sabado, Linggo. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, nakita niya na yung mga, yung yung draft, yung yung spending bill set. Eh, mga pinag-aaralan niya pa. Yun. Nakita na niya na ba yung mga supposed insertions na sinasabi ni na Senator Laxon? He will go through that. Di ba? Ganun si Presidente. Mabusisi. Bago po meron Kasi strongly worded yung veto message niya last time. Do we expect him to issue a similar statement? Let's wait. 
Basta pag unconstitutional, he will veto. Pag hindi, tuloy. Tuloy. Mm. Suffice to say, hindi niya ayaalaw yung anything, yung parang last time na vinito niya. Kasi ganito yun. When somebody says it's unconstitutional, it doesn't mean it's unconstitutional. This president is a lawyer. He knows what is unconstitutional or not. So he decides for himself kung tama ba yung sinasabi nitong isang tao o hindi. Sige, sec. Budget pa rin, uh, Rose Coast. Sir, basic lang po. Um, ano pinagkaiba nung extension ng validity ng 2019 sa pagkakaroon ng re-enacted budget para walang confusion? I'll ask the, the Secretary of Budget and the Secretary of Finance. This, uh, this is one territory <clears throat> I'd rather not enter into. This is very technical. Okay, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, MPC, uh, okay na tayo sa budget. Ship na tayo sa ibang topic. Oh, by the way, uh, I read a statement of uh, the detained senator. May tanong kayo doon? May nabasa ako. Ano sabi niya? I hope to spend my Christmas. Sabi niya, she hopes this will be the last time she will spend Christmas in jail. Yun yung sinasabi niya. Uh, that's for the court to decide, not for us. No, I was referring to, to the reaction of my statement. Said, uh, Delima said, presidential spokesperson so and so failed to understand the significance of a rider in the spending law that would deny entry. Panelo, according to her, was sorely mistaken to believe that Philippine officials could seek reconsideration on the travel ban. In the first place, we are not asking for a reconsideration. My statement is very clear. We cannot intrude into the process of a sovereign state in the same way that they cannot intrude into ours. What I was saying is that examining the provision of that law, it says that it's the US State Secretary who will determine whether or not a particular official of this government has something to do with the wrongful detention of Ms. Delima. And the basis should be credible information. Now, I happened to have a talk, not really a talk. We were seated with each other, with the ambassador of the US. And I don't know if I'm at liberty to tell what he, he made an off-remark statement. <clears throat> And he said, I read your statement. It's a very good statement. I agree with it. It's Congress that passed that law. So in other words, it's the executive department that will enforce that particular law. And that law precisely gives the discretion to the US State Secretary. That is why I said in my statement that we hope that the Secretary of U.S. State Secretary would give an informed and educated judgment on particular banning of certain people. Because as we have already explained, it's not a wrongful detention. Like me, for instance, <laughs> what in heaven's name can I be part of the detention of this woman? I am not even part of the prosecution. You failed to advise her. Oh, failed to advise. Advise what? <laughs> That's for the Secretary of Justice, not uh, from this office. Joseph. Did the ambassador tell you not to worry about it? He didn't say not to worry about it. He said he agrees with my statement, and he said that's Congress. Can you still go to the U.S., is it? If I, if I want to go, if there is any event that I need to go, let us see. Fair enough. Assurance. But I'm not worried about that. Hmm. So meaning, sir, if it is the executive department's prerogative, may chance na hindi siya implement. Eh, eh, may, may kulatili nga dun eh. Kailangan based on credible information. Okay. Julie? Um, Sir, follow up. Um, the, this budget law by the U.S. was passed, pero may standing invitation pa rin si 
US President Donald Trump. Exactly. Or President oh, yeah, 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 so what will happen? That what? is a contradiction. There is there is a standing invitation. What do you think will happen, sir? What do you, the standing invitation stands. So is the si President Duterte kung sakaling accept man niya. Ay nakikipresidente pero hindi ba siya sabi ni President niya ayaw naman talaga pumunta na the first place. She's not worried about it. Ay kung ayaw naman pumunta how can he be worried? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Julie. MPC. Follow up, follow up, Tina. Sir, pa-clarify. Ay, sir, hindi kasi ako lawyer. Sir, sabi ni Senator De Lima, both, both the U.S. Congress and the U.S. President have already determined the fact of my persecution. And that's, that this that this determination is already part of the federal law of the U.S. Correct. As such, can can she use this? Correct, but as I said, there is a culatilia in that law. You have to follow the process. There is a process where before a U.S. State Secretary can ban any person, which of course is a right on the part of the sovereign state, it has to determine whether the information relative to a person being banned is credible or not. So my discretion given to the authority that will decide whether or not you'll be banned who in there. Regardless, sir, if it, can she use this uh, document uh, in any court proceedings in Manila to prove that he, he, she is being publicly persecuted by, by this administration? Well, you can, you can, she can always use anything she wants. It's for the court to decide whether that's relevant or acceptable as evidence. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tina. NBC? But you must remember that it's always the court that will determine whether or not a person can be released, whether on bail or whether one can be released because he or she has been acquitted. It's all in the court. Sir, naisip ko lang. If so, if ever lang uh, Secretary De Li uh, Senator De Lima was released by uh, through bail or by the court, and she goes to the U.S., can she use this, this particular document for applying for political asylum? Applying for a political asylum would depend on the country being applied to. She will be determined whether when they win that. Thank you, uh, Tina. Questions, MPC? Other Topics? No more? Hola na? Last two. Hola na? Okay. Maraming salamat, MPC. Uh, sir, New Year schedule. Do you have a message? 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 Hindi ko alam kung may, mayroon ba siyang activity. Parang wala ako nakita na ano ah. Wala ako nakita kay Yusek. Okay na. Maraming salamat MPC, Chief Presidential Legal Counsel and Spokesperson, Attorney Salvador Panelo. Balik tayo sa PTV4, Radio Pilipinas.